God's richest peace and blessings to you as we gather today on this Lord's Day, as we come together for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we reflect uh, today again on one of the parables, um, the parable of the seeds uh, being sown uh, with the wheat, the wheat being sown, the tares being sown with the wheat. Uh, that is the uh, gospel reading for uh, this particular Sunday. But our reflections are uh, more on the Old Testament reading uh, today uh, from Isaiah chapter 44, where God declares himself to be that rock and to be that uh, salvation. And so it's good to have everybody here. It's good to be back off of vacation for uh, the last uh, couple of weeks. 
And uh, if you are joining us online today, uh, this is Trinity Lutheran Church, Keene, New Hampshire. And uh, we welcome you to our worship at uh, Keene, New Hampshire. God bless you today. So uh, if you happen to go to the uh, website and you were able to download uh, our bulletin uh, for today, uh, that uh, we'll be using that as our service. It's uh, based on the service of prayer and preaching from the Lutheran service book. And uh, that service is outlined for you today, and I would invite you to join with us in the invocation and confession on page uh, three of the bulletin. Let, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust, in God, whose word I praise, in God, I trust. Gather in the name of the one who created all things and unites us to Christ through our baptism. We prepare to receive God's good gifts to us all. With confidence, let us draw near to God, confess our sin, and be renewed in God's mercy and grace. God of mercy and grace, we confess to you all our sins of thought, word, and deed. We've trusted in our own strength and not in you, and so have tangled ourselves in conflicts and troubles of our own making. Helpless and weak, we return to you our fortress and firm foundation. For the sake of your Son and his deliverance from death and the grave, forgive us our sins, create in us a new heart, and renew our trust in you. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God's love is shown to us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. As a called and ordained servant of God and by God's authority, I joyfully announce to you the forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, joined with Christ in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit, you are free to live as God's people sent to serve the world. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in areas of the world where war rages and destroys life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the church of Jesus Christ, that where there are divisions, they may be healed in accordance with God's will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace within our families, that forgiveness and love may prevail, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace within our congregations and in this place, that our worship may be joyful and may bring honor to God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and direct us, good Lord. Amen. Join in singing Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, who has chosen us in grace, poured into us your life, and caused us to spring up like willows by flowing streams. We rejoice this day to be yours by faith, asking you to so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your love, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated. So the reading for our service and for our sermon today is from the prophet Isaiah, the 44th chapter. But now hear, O Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord who made you, who formed you from the womb, and will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. They shall spring up among the grass like willows by flowing streams. This one will say, I am the Lord's. And another will call on the name of Jacob. And another will write on his hand, the Lord's, and name himself by the name of Israel. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last, and besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me. Since I appointed an ancient people, let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? Are you my witnesses? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our catechetical reflection today, we join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. If you have your Bibles or your bulletins today and like to encourage you to open up to Isaiah, the 44th chapter, where Isaiah says these words in the name of the Lord. He says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, there is no rock, I know not any. We're all familiar with the phrase, death and taxes. Well, according to one source, it's a saying that's usually attributed to Ben Franklin, who wrote in a 1789 letter that our new constitution is now established and has an appearance that promises permanency. But in this world, nothing can be so certain except death and taxes. However, as best can be discerned, he actually lifted that or got that from some other sources probably, because according to the Yale Book of Quotations, an earlier known use came in 1716 by Christopher Bullock in his book, The Cobbler of Preston. 
There he wrote, "'Tis impossible to be sure of anything but death and taxes." Either way, I'm sure we probably feel that to be somewhat true in our lives. Even I have to send a substantial tribute to Caesar every three months. And I mostly despise writing that check. Even as I buckle when I experience the loss of loved ones in my life. There are two things that truly make God's people and all people probably groan as we grow tired under this world's weight. Except in the midst of them, there is another assurance. An assurance that's even greater than those. A blessed assurance. And that assurance is, is that Jesus is ours, as the hymn says. Jesus is mine, and I am his. Where God assures his own that he is the only God in whom we have redemption and security and hope. And upon that, we can build our lives that by faith we are safe and secure in Jesus who is our rock. Amen. Now for Israel at the time of Isaiah, things aren't looking really good. The people are in exile. The land, the promised land of old, from the days of Moses and Joshua is firmly fixed in the grasp of, of a foreign nation, no longer belonging to Israel. Hope, for the most part, is lost. It's not unlike our time, I think, for many. I saw the headline of an article the other day that said that if you were going to write the headline of 2020 thus far, what would it look like? Suffering sickness, political turmoil, national unrest. Get me to 2021 already. <laughs> That's what folks are saying. And all the while, as we read in the parable of Matthew 13, you have this Satan who is prowling around like a roaring lion, sowing tares with the wheat. Where one of the tasks of Isaiah is, is that he's faced with is, is that of kind of kindling an expectation of God's presence in the midst of a world like that. A God who would come to them and to save them. To restore perspective. To envision and embolden hope upon the people of God. And that's good news because even in our time, we know that he has. Because with death and taxes like certainty, there are the assurances of his word there are the assurances of his forgiveness. There are the assurances of his grace. And they're all in place, still in place. Where even in the midst of terror, his assurances accompany us with the promises like he gives in Matthew 13 of a future and a hope. When he tells his disciples that they will shine like sons, daughters of righteousness in the kingdom. Or where in the meantime, St. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, that we have the Holy Spirit who continues to come to our aid, who groans with us with sighs that are too deep for words, ever searching the heart, interceding for the saints according to the will of God. And this is no small comfort to you and to me. Where even as we groan in the midst of creation, that itself is groaning under the weight of sin and suffering. God's people are being lifted up. God's people will be delivered. And that's all because of the assurance of who and whose we are in him. If you look at chapter 44 in Isaiah, verse 1 in the text says, But now hear, O Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord who made you, who formed you from the womb. I will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant. Jeshurun, which is a poetic word. It means upright, whom I have chosen. Where the remnant of God's people, no matter how much they feel cast off in the world or in their circumstances, are not cast off by like some well-worn garment. God declares and re-declares time and time again 
whose we are by his choosing. But now, says the prophet, signaling a change in the way that it may have been and the way that it may even be, signaling that change of how things will change and even now are changing when God is in the house. When our lives are built upon that rock, he goes on to call us chosen, signaling a completed action. You don't choose yourself. You are chosen by him, as we know, by water and the word, where his name is eternally stamped upon our foreheads and upon our hearts. We know whose we are. And the gifts and the call of God, says Paul, are irrevocable. They can't be taken back. And yet how easily such assurances are forgotten in the midst of the storms that we face, where we flounder, our faith at times fails. One commentator puts it this way. He says, we have the promises of God's love and forgiveness. We have his assurance that he is in control and ultimately in victory. But our eyes tell us that maybe God's got things just a little mixed up. Sin and evil sometimes seem to have the upper hand. We feel as we ourselves are in ag exile and, and the, the idols of wealth and, and materialism and selfish desires and self-centeredness might serve us better than this God who calls us in his name. For many, God isn't really God after all. Child of God, the assurances that God gives here still stand especially when the one making them is the Lord of heaven and earth. Our rock, our redeemer. Verse six says, thus says the Lord, Yahweh, that is God's covenant name of grace, the king of Israel and his redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Where Isaiah piles up name of God upon name of God, it's like you're standing and you know what the scene is, but there's six different camera angles coming at this one true God and all of them demonstrate who he is. I am who I am. The Lord, Yahweh, his covenant name. I am the king of Israel, a king who not only rules, but a king who fights for us, where the greatest fight that ever took place on this earth was at Calvary's cross. There Jesus, our king, took his gloves off, put Satan to the mat, serving out his service until death, all to rise again as king of kings. our kinsman redeemer, putting up the ransom of our life with mighty hands and outstretched arms, literally outstretched for you and for me, the Lord of hosts of angel armies, sending those angels forth to do his bidding even now, to serve and protect the people of God, lest we dash a foot against a stone. first and the last, on scene, before and after we arrive, our A to Z, our pioneer, our perfecter, our author, our finisher, and then God, Elohim, our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Luther once put it this way, he said, a God means that from which we are to expect all good and to which we are to take refuge in distress, to which the people of God say amen, where in 100% of the time, the Lord's promises are fulfilled. He does not make mistakes. He does not lie. He will not abandon. He will not. He cannot. Verse 7, who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me since I appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. The other so-called gods of this world, they're pretenders. Let them look at you with their fierceness. But 
then grab him by the beard and you notice the beard comes off. Your teeth false. Their purported strength hollow. A sham. They may clamor for tribute. They may seek to instill fear. But compared to our God, they are nothing. And so fear not. Not of your own strength. Because of him and of who he is and who he has called you to be. Fear not, says O Jacob, but take Jacob out and insert name here. Fear not, O Lori. Fear not, O Jacob. Fear not, O Miriam. Fear not, O Scott, Marina. Fear not. Be not afraid. For I have not told you from the beginning and declared it to you. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know no other. Do not fear. Where again our Savior and his word means what it says, conveying the sense that he has heard your deepest concerns. He has known you more deeply than you know yourselves. And he has come on your behalf. He can do no other because, because we are his children. He has brought us to himself in Christ, where we may be desert bound at times in our lives, but yet the word says, I will pour water on that thirsty ground and streams on that dry ground, and I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. As we are born of a word and water, his name is firmly fixed on you, and that is our confession. This is our faith, a confession and a faith that we don't make ourselves, but rather one that continues to make us and to shape us and to form us into those people that he would have us be. First and foremost, a people that will grow and thrive, springing up among the grass like willows by flowing streams, Isaiah says. That they may be called oaks of righteousness, he says elsewhere, a planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. But second, that we would know and we would reaffirm this day who we are by faith in Jesus Christ, saying and writing on our own hands that we belong to the Lord. This one will say, you will say, I am the Lord's. And another will call on the name of Jacob, and another will write on his hand, just as you are engraved upon the palms of his hands, the Lord's, and name himself by the name of Israel. For even in the midst of the darkest times, we do not fear, for God has been faithful to save us. He's done so in the past. He will do so in the future. Where there is comfort in knowing that we belong to God, where if God be for us, who can be against us? Where finally we as God's people are sown into the world, a seed, the sons and the daughters of righteousness, where our God would be served and revered as Lord and King, and he would be received as Redeemer and trusted as the rock, and worshiped as Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then borne witness to in this world by his redeemed. Saint Cyprian challenges us this way. He says, Beloved, let us arm ourselves with all our might. Let us prepare ourselves for the struggle by innocence of heart, integrity of faith, dedication to virtue. A number of years ago, the Japanese government tried to attract uh, endangered albatrosses to the Izu Peninsula in order to encourage them to breed. And so for more than two years, they had this five-year-old albatross by the name of Deco 
who tried to woo one of the wooden decoys that they had set up. He went even so far to build fancy nests and fight off potential suitors, spending his days standing faithfully by her wooden side. Japanese researcher Fumio Sato talking about the albatross's infatuation with the wooden decoy, said this. He says, he seems to have no desire to date real birds. <laughs> well, so it is with those who put their affections in the gods of this world, instead of the God that calls us to fear and to love and to trust in him above all things. Ain't nothing the song says, like the real thing. Not in love, and certainly not in faith. Where today, as he has and he will, our God assures us that he is the one and only true God in whom we have redemption, and we have security, and we have hope. Where by faith, we are safe and secure in him who is our rock. We know not, indeed, we need not any other. Amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As a response hymn today, uh, you're invited to join as we sing together the hymn, Blessed Assurance. invited to now participate in a time of prayer uh, as we gather together to lift up those petitions uh, that are on our hearts this day. 
And uh, we are using the printed prayers on page uh, nine of your bulletins. But if you don't have uh, the bulletin, uh, that's okay. This will be an opportunity for us to reflect a little bit on some of the petitions that are uh, on our hearts this day. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, you are merciful and gracious. The world and all it contains belongs to you, and yet the sufferings of this present time remind your people that we are not yet home. Help us to trust in your mercy as we wait for you to fulfill all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are merciful and gracious. You set up and depose rulers according to your will. Grant us wise and just men and women in all positions of public trust in this and every land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are merciful and gracious. Together with your whole creation, people everywhere cry out in pain of body and mind and spirit. Today we especially hold before you those that we now name in our hearts. Sustain these and all who suffer afflictions, bringing them healing and wholeness in your good time and ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we continue to pray also for the various communities around our country that are suffering greatly at this time. And we ask, gracious Lord, for your intervention, for your healing, for your grace. For those that are working on a vaccine, gracious Father, grant wisdom as you have in so many times past to those who search these things out by your wisdom and your grace. Grant your blessing to all of those that continue to serve us. And even in parts of our country where things are starting to, as it were, get back to normal, we ask for your continued blessing, for wisdom, prudence, comfort, strength. We ask your blessing on all who travel and ask that you would continue to grant them your mercy. For all those, gracious Lord, who are in whatever need or pain, and again, we name them before you in our hearts and lay them before you, asking that their prayers be heard and answered according to your good and gracious will. For, O oh God, you are merciful and gracious. Each day we are reminded that we are not yet home, but according to your promise we are waiting for the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. And until that day, Lord, keep us from all evil and keep our goings out and our coming in from this time forth and forevermore. For all of these things and whatever else you know that we need, we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who also taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn for today are the first and the last stanzas of My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
be to God. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us uh, for worship today. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about uh, Trinity, uh, we invite you to visit uh, tlckeen.org for not only past services, but also for daily devotions. Uh, I've been out of town for the last couple of weeks, and so it's good to be back uh, among you. Uh, those daily devotions can also be accessed. Uh, if you'd like to uh, give us your email, we'd love to send you a, uh, a daily devotion each day uh, for that as well. So God's richest peace and blessings to you. Have a great day.